En, to, tre, fire. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Fly Tying. Um, this time we're going to tie a very famous fly. I think, uh, I mean, I've been reading all about it for many days now. And, and uh, you know, um, I've been looking up uh, different patterns and the humpy is really a good fly. I mean, uh, I mean, this is uh, for me the the fly in the box when I'm fishing for 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 uh, for graylings. I know I, I love to fish for grayling and in Norway we got a uh, huge grayling in some rivers and and I fish in Gromma and Rena and uh, other rivers but in uh, I really like to fish in Gromma. Uh, I really like the river and and there is uh, a Often the fish is standing in fast-moving water and behind pockets, you know, behind stones. And I like to fish upstream, and and this fly seem, works very well because it floats so good. And and again, you can use it as a um, strike indicator, you know. I haven't tried it as a strike indicator. I'm certainly going to do this um, this um, late summer. I'm I'm fishing in Groma late summer when it just about when it's getting cold again. I, I love to fish there when the, the you know the leaves are. Get, uh, you know, when the, the leaves are getting brown and yellow and all different colors, I like to go there and fish for for, for So this is a real nice pattern, and 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 uh, uh, I think everyone is tying it, and it's a all-round fly. Uh, of course, you can fish it in waters, and you can fish it in rivers, and it's a real nice fly to have. And and yeah, and I try I try to tie it as uh, close to the original as possible, but I also tie it. Um, uh, uh, very small ones. Uh, uh, you know, I like to tie them in all the way on different types of hooks. Um, this time I'm using just a standard uh, dry fly hook, uh, size 12. Um, this is from Partridge, and, and I also use the Tiemco Triple One uh, TMC One 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 in size 10. And it's a short shanked wide gap hook, and uh, when I, especially when I tie smaller flies, I like to have a little bit bigger gap, and and uh, I kind of tie them all the way down uh, to size, yeah, not the smallest because then you know it gets too tight, you know, the fly doesn't look right. But um, uh, this this hook is uh, also nice, but um, but here I'm gonna tie it on a standard dry fly hook. Uh, size 12 and for this fly I'm using moose body here in natural as you can see I got a nice piece real nice piece and the tips are ooh, perfect so yeah and we need some uh, elk hair bleached I use elk hair bleached uh, premium from this is from spirit river and for hackle I'm just using uh, you know I have this saddle hackle I, I bought and I always check when I buy hackle I check the the, um, the sizes because sometimes you buy these and they're just tiny tiny sizes on the whole cape and I made sure when I bought this that I have some size 12s and and size 14s and so and and yeah and I got uh, many in here actually quite many that size 12 actually a couple of ones size 10 too so I'm quite happy with this one so if you're gonna buy a cape and you have the opportunity to go through every one in the shelf you should actually go in and check uh, bring with you your hackle, your hackle measure, and 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 um, and and uh, check it out. That's a good tip, actually. So I'm using that grizzly, and I'm using this one. This is one I I bought for a while ago, and and you know, actually it's many years ago. But here I also I checked it. I got some small ones, and I got size 12s, and actually a couple of size size um, size. Um, uh, 10 also it's a nice you see there's some big ones here on the sides and yeah so check them out so I'm gonna use this for hackle you can use a brown and just standard dry fly cape but I like the the dark center of the when the fly gets this dark center <laughs> I hope you know what I mean yeah and and for the thread I'm using 60 I like a little bit thicker thread when I'm tying these uh, flies with deer hair or or, or or roe hair or elk hair. I, I really like a little bit thicker thread and um, it works great for, for a little bit bigger flies. But of course when you tie them smaller, uh, I, you can go over to 8-0 but usually I don't tie 
this big I, I call this a big fly because it goes at a big volume you know and and, and um, if you tie this fly in small small size I think it uh, kind of destroy the pattern I, I like it in fairly big sizes like a 12 and also size 10 if you want but 12 and 14 I think is uh, perhaps 16 too but yeah, 12 is it's a real nice fly. I I, I mean I fish I fish grilling with it and uh, as I told you and uh, and uh, I think size 12 is a perfect size for this fly. So yeah, um, I try to tie it as uh, close to the original as possible. So I'm gonna upload this as the humpy and not the variant. I I, I mean I, I tie it uh, pretty close to the original. Uh, I don't have any underbody. I have tying thread and yeah. So shall we start? Okay, so here, here you see, there's the humpy, and I'm filling up my box. I got all summer because this is a fly I use uh, when I'm fishing for for grailing, and uh, that's the, the end of the summer. So I have a lot of time tying this, and you know, this is a fly I use, and I wanted to show you the flies I, I tie and use. So, so it's a fairly new pattern for me. Uh, I haven't fished a lot with it, but. Uh, I have had it in my box uh, for some years and, and, and you know, uh, I really am going to try uh, using it as a strike indicator uh, this year. I haven't tried that before and I was reading about it and, uh, and uh, of course this is a great pattern for strike indicator. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what we do. But yeah, let's start this fly. Okay, enough talking. <laughs> I like to talk, you know. So I'm just going to see here, I've got a lot of pump is there there's one yay so i'm gonna fill up my box so let's start by by putting in a, a hook and uh, usually i i i always pinch in the barb i mean i don't i don't think i i, I miss out on any trout i mean of course if there are fish that are jumping a lot uh, it's it's easier to 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 you know lose the fish when the barb is hooked in, but you know most of the time I'm fishing catch and release. So if I'm not fishing catch and release, I don't pinch in the barb because it's not uh, in some of the rivers in Norway. There uh, actually is allowed to fish with barb, and if I'm fishing, if I want a fish, uh, you know, if I want want to eat, I don't I don't have to uh, pinch in the barb, but. I always does it. Uh, I mean, if I lose a fish, it's not the end of the world. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. So let's start. Okay. Okay. So I'm starting with tying in the thread. I don't like to tie it all the way there because uh, I'm going to finish off with a couple of hackles and everything. So we're going to start there a couple of uh, millimeters behind the, the, the hook eye. And I'm going to tie in my thread all the way to the hook part. Okay. Snip off the thread. And we're gonna tie in the tail and then we're gonna use moose body here and as you can see there this is the fur okay so we need to take this out before we and actually I always save this stuff this is amazing dubby for nymphs so so don't throw it away for this piece you gotta you can tie a couple of flies with this stuff so uh, you 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 do what you want but this this stuff is really amazing you can try and dub it it's like super super thin when you make a, a dubbing noodle out of it, so yeah, so yep, let's uh, let's snip out a little bit, and and I mean a little bit. Uh, you can you can do what you want, but uh, I don't want too much, but not too little. We want this fly to stand good on the water. So here's what I'm going to use, and and I'm going to move my fingers all the way up here, and we're going to pull out the under fur, and I'm putting in this in a box because I really like that dubbing and I'm saving it for for a different for a small 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 nymph I use it for so yeah okay so don't throw anything away <laughs> okay so we have a small bunch and I'm gonna put it in the stacker put in the fibers and we're gonna tap it I like to tap it on my hand. If I tap it on the table, you're gonna, I'm gonna, the microphone would just go crazy. So tap it, I can tap it a little bit here. So I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna have this one in my left hand and this one in my right hand. I'm gonna pull it out. It's always, oh, it's not good. You see, they're not lined. So we're gonna do it one more time. 
One more time, okay. Tap, 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 tap. <laughs> so, let's try it again. Oh, that's great. Okay, so pull them out with your left hand. And this one is ready for, for another round. You can see this is a cheap one. This is not expensive. I, I don't remember where what kind of a name. Is it stone for or something? Yeah, I think this. So, okay. So there are the tail and you can see I haven't overdone it, I think. I mean, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's enough for me. You can you can tie in some more if you want. This, the, the, it's important that this fly floats good, so you don't underdo it, okay. Underdo it, yeah, don't underdress it. So the length of the tail, I like to have it a little bit longer than the hook. So I'm holding in front of the hook eye and measuring it. As you can see, I like to have a little bit longer. And I'm gonna change hands and I'm gonna snip off the, the butt, butt end, okay? And I'm gonna tie it directly in. And it's important now that, that you tie it in just by the hook point, okay? So take a few loose turns like that and be ready. And when you pull it, press the, the butt down against the hook like that. Pull it, a couple of turns and push it. Then you will secure it to the hook and it will last a lot longer. And I'm, as you see, I'm still holding on to the, ta to the um, tail fibers. And I'm tying touching turns all the way back to where I want the, the tail to, to, to kind of start. And I want it just by the hook bend. I like to go a little bit down and cross your thread and go up and still holding the tail. I'm gonna go back to the hook point and let go of those guys. As you can see, I think that is a nice tail. So you can decide how many you want, but if you can see that, I mean, it's perfect, I think. Okay, so then we are going to tie in the premium elk hair, bleached elk hair, as you can see. And here we're going to take out a lot more because we really want the fly to float and everything. So I'm snipping out a big piece. And I don't mean a big, 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 big piece, but <laughs> quite a quite a good one so as you can see this is all a mess so start working with the the, the hairs and I'm pulling out this stuff and I'm, I'm saving this too I'm just putting it together with the other one as you can see I have a little bunch here and I'm gonna gonna make a dubbing out of it and make some flies I like the idea of you know if I can if I can use this stuff this under hair this, this woolly part, if I can use that to make a fly, I can catch fish on. It's a really nice feeling, you know? Yeah, so I'm gonna make sure there are no more fibers here and I'm gonna change hands and I'm gonna put this in the stacker. <laughs> Tips down. I really like this fly. I really, really like it. I'm gonna use it so much more this year. I just had a few in my box, but this year I'm really gonna fish. So like this and I'm gonna tap it like that and I'm gonna do the same thing this in my left hand and take my right hand open it up and as you can see I like to have my scissor in my hand when I'm working with with uh, every sort oh look at that oh that's nice look at the fibers I, I really got a nice piece and pinch them out this is ready for another fly put it over there I'm gonna measure it and here I'll, I really like to it all depends on what kind of hook you're using but this is a standard so I'm, 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 th I'm thinking perhaps I, I, I've taken it a little bit shorter and as I can see this is a little bit too much I feel it's a little bit too much I'm gonna pinch out a few fibers Ooh, I don't want too much I really don't want that. there you go that's that's a little bit better so I'm 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 measuring up, and I want it a little bit shorter than the, than the than the tail. But you can you can you can choose, of course. But a little bit shorter. I'm gonna I'm gonna be very picky on this part because if you get this wrong, the the, the wing won't look good. So I'm just gonna check it like that. I really like that. So I'm gonna change my hands over, and I'm gonna snip off the tip or the butts. Like that square and I'm always not letting go here I'm holding with my 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 finger and thumb yeah. I, I will say like David McPhail says finger and thumb yeah so 
Okay, so I'm coming down here and making sure that the the this these buttons are aligned with the with the hook point, and make a couple of turns and loose turns. I like the loose turns. Two couple of loose wraps. Okay, and when you're tightening up, push down with your finger and thumb. Okay, so that and one turn like that, and I'm securing the buttons straight away. I like to do that all the way and that makes sure this is sec nicely secured like that and i'm going to lift the the um, lcr lift it up and take some spiral turns we call it spi spiral turns yeah and when when you do this you can turn this a little bit against you like that because then you if you don't this is going to slide a little bit over you don't want that and now i have to turn my vice <laughs> to check out if i'm all the way back there it's very important to have it all the way back to the tail yeah and then we're gonna make the body by by filling up with thread okay and you see i haven't let go yet so this is a quite tricky fly to tie but when you get this i mean you can tie oh it's so it's so fun i, I mean i've been tying this for for a couple of days now and and every time i, I sit down and tie the fly i get a getting a great mood so Okay, so let's lift this up and I'm getting ready my right hand and pinching them and, and pulling them forwards. And then what I like to do, I like to change hands again and I like to take them like this and I pull them a little bit, making sure all the fibers are coming up for from their natural uh, position, you know, so you don't get anything crossing around each other. So I like to even hold like that, hold like this. You know a couple of times make sure they are nice and then we're gonna take a few turns back there so i have to actually hold this in my right hand or you can do it with your other hand but this is quite easy so take a loose turn and i take two loose turns and these turns really need to be by the hook point okay two loose wraps like that i'm gonna make sure they are on the top and i'm changing hands holding back here and i'm gonna tighten up a little bit like that easy does it and i really like the steps when you're when i get this picky you know i use the word picky uh in norwegian it's called uh, and and pirkete uh, <laughs> so I, I really like that and and yeah so take a couple of turns and when i'm tightening up i'm holding the wing like that tighten Ooh, that's why i like to use the six o thread and i'm going to tie a little bit forwards and every turn i kind of take a hold of it with my left hand and hold my bobbin in my right and and tie a little bit forwards and then i got the control of the fibers you know tie a little bit forwards so we make a couple of millimeter small space here pull it up you don't want it to go down on the back far side as you see perhaps it'll slide over no oh it's starting that's what i mean by having control of it for every turn so yeah so like that there we have a couple of millimeters and then we're going to lift up the wing and we're going to pull back and we're going to take some some support wraps underneath the the the, the hairs to to make them stand up and i really like to have a nice so there we go and i'd like to taper this part out a little bit okay and go back because here we're going to have the hackle and if you have a if you have a steep uh, angle here the the hackle gonna slide off so that's a little tip there too so tie a little bit forwards and back again and now we're gonna separate our wing okay and i really like the color of the bleached uh, elk hair oh it really gets me going you know and before we split it i'm gonna use my thumb and i'm gonna kind of you know groom it <laughs> with my fingers so every fiber is kind of sticking out where they're supposed to stick out so that it's not one go that way and the one go that way okay so fan it out and then you can separate it divide it in two this is a cool fly like that and then we're going to do a figure of eight okay so i'm on the right side as you see i'm going to go up and between the wings like that go down on the left side up on the left side and cross over on the top and go down on the right side and up again and i got a fly in my room and it's gone <laughs> sorry 
So I have gone over, crossing over to the right side. I come up on the right side and I'm going to do this one more time. Okay, two times I like to do this. Making sure the thread, when you come up, make sure the thread is nice and neat in there and not all the way over there. Make sure it's nice and tight in there. And you can hold, you know, like that. And I like to do this two times and I'm going to make a secure wrap around the hook, securing your work, as, as we say. Yeah, take a, a, few, a few wraps there. And then we're going to tie around the wings as you would do on a spent spinner. I think you call it a spent spinner. Yeah. So I'm on the right side. I come up again, crossing over to the left side. And then we're going to take a few turns around the wing pose. Then I'm going to show you. There you go. I'm on the left side like that. And I'm going to hold the wing and I'm going to take a turn and I'm not pulling so hard. I'm just going to nice and, you know, be careful with this stuff. You're just going to make a small support turns, you know, for, for the wing. You don't have to pull hard here. So I'm going to take a few turns up and here you can, you can, you can do how much you want. I'm taking three or four turns and I'm going to go that back down again. That way, yeah all the way down and making sure the thread is all the way down there you know there and then I come up on the left side and I'm gonna do the same with this wing so it doesn't matter which wing you start with but you know just make sure you get a hold of the wing before you turn around okay so take three four turns or five or whatever you want doesn't matter you just make it nice and neat like that, go back down again, make sure the thread's all the way down before you go and secure a wrap. And go over and take a turn in the front. This is quite important to make this secure turn, to secure everything in on the hook. So you don't... So take one turn in the front, like that. And then I do one more figure of eight, okay? To, to kind of support them so they don't fall down. On. Okay, so one over there, one over there, and I'm going to finish off uh, uh, this this section by one turn in the back okay and here I'm ready to tie in the hackle so you can you know and you can make sure all the fibers are where you want and I'm just gonna pull them a little bit forward because we're gonna tie in the hackle I don't want to tie in these ones okay all this fly looks great really great fly you really need the humpy, you need to fish with it, because it's, just, it's so exciting. The fish takes it so hard, because they have no time to to decide what it is, and just see yeah, yeah, a big uh, bushy fly, and just go BAM! <laughs> so, okay, so now we're going to prepare the hackles. And I'm going to pull out, I'm going to find, an, oh, there's a nice one. Wow, first try, you know. So there I got my hackle, and I'm going to check it for the size, down here. Just remove the fluffy part. And actually know this is a size 12 because I... Oh, it's perfect. Okay. So we're gonna prepare it. I'm gonna show you down here. As you see, this is nice and black in the middle. And I like that in this fly. Okay. So perhaps take off the, this part. This is a little bit long. It was a little bit over 12. So there we go. And what I'm doing, I'm, I'm snipping off the tip like that. And I'm gonna make a small, some small barbs. I'm just going to place my scissor here to support because I've been drinking coffee and I'm kind, uh, kind of a little bit shaky. So it's quite much just lie there and just snip like that. Okay, so I'm going to do this with the, the brown one, brown hackle, and I'm going to do this, this with the, the grizzly hackle. Pull out some of the fibers like that. Just place the scissor there. You don't have to do it like this, but it's a nice way to do it. Then you got great control and as you see this is so long that when I'm tying it in like this I'm gonna have enough to have a turn here that's important tight in a couple of turns and we need to secure it in the front too so don't fall out and I'm gonna place this with the the doll side together okay I think it's called the doll side you know the shiny part is out to you and the shiny part is back here and the shiny part is back, back there and I have the grizzly here and the brown one in the back Okay, so I'm going to tie these two guys in at the same time. The grizzly hackle is facing to me, okay? So make sure you don't have any fibers that's going to make some trouble for you. Pull them a little bit forwards. Tie it in on the side. Make sure they are nice aligned. 
And here I'm taking three turns and I'm gonna tighten up. I really don't want them to slip. <laughs> you don't even want that because that's so annoying. We use that a lot of time on the fly. So like that, and then I'm just gonna carefully move those a little bit forwards. And I'm gonna take a couple of nice secure wraps in the front there, as you can see. You see them? Yeah, there they were. And when you have those barbs on, it's a lot easier. So I'm gonna make sure, nice and secure, and I'm making a nice tapered spot here for the hackle. I'm gonna stop there, that's important, okay? So I'm gonna fifa up this one, see, oh, that's nice. So they actually, you know, you can, you can move them around while you're tying. I like that. So the thread needs to be there. That's important because we're going to finish off the brown hackle there and the gr grizzly in the front. Okay. Ooh, the humpy. <laughs> wow, I get excited on a fly, you know. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm pulling out the grizzly and I'm going to start off with the brown one by pulling out the grizzly like that. And I'm going to go down and up and I'm going to take the first two turns on this side because I want a brown, brown color in the back and it's also making sure this hackle is you know ready for 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 palm ring so yeah so take a, a few turns in the back there's two turns and I like to take three to four turns in the back about three I'll, yeah I'll take three I like the three back and the three in the front I, you can do what you want I think it's four they use most of the time but I like three I don't want to overdo it you can oh you can take four you decide three or four turns, I will say. But now you need to take the first turn all the way into the to the wing. That's that's quite important. One, two, and three. And now you look, you got nice space to finish off your fly. You see, and the, and the grizzly is going to go way beyond this point, so you can take four turns to be a little bit big. Ah, oh, that's great. Cross your thread. Sorry. I don't have a lot of space and I'm not going to break this off. I'm going to take a few turns in the front. One, two, three, four, and I'm going to snip it off because I don't want to pull this off or I don't want to fold it back because I'm going to get some fibers that sticks in there and I don't want that. So support the, the needle with your finger and snip it off. Use your finger to, to place the, the, the scissor on like that. Then you got food control. Okay. So then we're going to come up with the, the grizzly hackle. And here I, I like to use a little bit less grizzly, but three to four turns. Okay, so just a couple of turns in the back and wiggle it a little bit, bit so don't tie down any fibers. Two, three turns and a couple of turns in the front. And again, I like to have the first turn all the way up to the wing. One, two, three, two, and the last one. Oh, I can see I have caught in a fiber. Oh, I don't want that. Go back. You get up there. You be a nice fellow, okay? Get in there. One turn in the back. Ah, what's happening here? What are you doing, you guys? Get back there. You're not supposed to be a part of the tackle. I can see, I'll snip that out later. Okay, I'll do it one more time. Pull that back. Pull that one back. Take one turn. So we have one there, two, perhaps the last turn in the front, like that, three. And finish off your hackle by crossing your thread. One, two, and all the way to the eye. Four, and then I'm gonna fold everything back, okay? Fold every fiber back, take a turn and just make sure you got every fiber and make a nice head, okay? That's really nice with this fly, oh yeah. <laughs> Yay, yay. Nice humpy. And we're gonna finish up with the V finish. And that's the humpy. Not humpy, but humpy. I think I call it, I think they pronounce it humpy. Yeah, it's humpy. Two, three, and four. Oh, I don't want you to be in my knot. Pull it. I'm just gonna support the hook when I'm pulling the, the V finish knot. Okay. Snip off the thread and just break off this hackle. And now I'm going to check where what happened under here. No, it's great. It's great. And I'm going to, you know, take these fibers and pull them a little bit forward. Make sure the wing is where it's supposed to be. And you got a nice humpy. Look at that. Wow. 
yeah and you can see the wing i really like when you look under you can see the tips of the wing of course you can have a little bit shorter wing if you want but uh, if you follow the measures it uh, you know i think it looks great and, and, and i got a lot of them i've been tying humpy all morning and last night i was tying humpies and humpies and humpies here's one more you can see i got a they're they're almost the same you see i use the same measure every time they they're all alike <laughs> i can you can do like this yay the humpy <laughs> humpies yeah so there we go that's the humpy you can always varnish it but uh you know I don't think you need that. Uh, I really, this fly needs to float a lot. So you can put on some varnish if you want, but I'm not going to do it. And as you can see, look at the nice, uh, nice um, color on the tail, the, the dark color, and the nice color in the thorax with the dark uh, furnace shackle. I really like that. And the yellow. Oh, this is a real killer pattern. So there you go, humpies. And as I told you, I like to kind of make it look nice before I put it in a box by pulling the fibers a little bit forwards like that, making sure the tail is nice, you know, everything. So there we go. So that's the humpy and uh, I, I really love to have this in my playlist on YouTube. Oh, I got a lot of other patterns, of course famous patterns uh, patterns i'm reading a lot of books i have uh, uh, this is um, you know this book uh, from mike dawes this book uh, i know many of you got this book but uh, i got this book when i was uh, quite young and uh, i've been having it i always read it every year and you know uh, this time i'm gonna tie some uh, some uh, some dry flies and, and now uh, streamers you got a lot of streamers here uh, many, you know, the Alexandra and, and many of the Muddler Minnows and the Mickey Finn and, and the Black Ghost and everything is in here. And, and I got a Wet Flies, uh, Invicta and I got the, I got the um, <laughs> Kihi and oh, there's so many nice ones. Gold March Brown, March Brown, Silver March Brown and uh, yeah, and, and some spiders too, I think. Yeah, we're going to tie some spiders. I'm really looking forward to that. Heck and Peckham is here, and and uh, yeah, and uh, gold rib. Uh, here's here. This is the British way, and they got the the American way. It's, it's, it's different sorts of flies, and uh, yeah, green Peter and green Welsh glory. There's some, a lot of famous wet flies here, and so I'm gonna look into this. The butcher, you know, uh, the coachman. See the coachman there. It's a nice one so yeah i got a lot of books nice books so uh, and of course the dynamic nymphing soon so there you go that's the humpy it really tight and i'm going to try it out as i told you i'm going to try it out so on a strike indicator i haven't mm, fished up with it with the stripe indicator and i was have a as i, as I said I, I fish in the groma river where i fish upstreams and i would love to have a small nymph so i think i'm gonna tie a nymph that kind of uh fits with this fly so we'll see we'll see thanks for watching you guys and and uh, i like to say hi to sean i mean uh, you've been great to me you you you, you always uh, give me a comments on uh, if i say something you know i'm wondering about uh, how to spell and pronounce things i mean i can sit, sit sit down on the computer and and you know do some research on the words but i like to just you know, when I'm in the mood of filming, I like to just film and if I say something wrong or pronounce things wrong, I mean, it's good to know that you're there, Sean, and I'm really happy for you, for you taking your time to, to, you know, supporting me and, and, and type, you know, you comment all my movies and that's really great. Thanks, man. And God bless to you and, uh, and your wife. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I think we'll perhaps talk a little bit this summer on Skype or something. Yeah, so thanks, Ron, and you other guys. Uh, please hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. And I'm gonna go straight on tying some more flies. I got the whole day today. Uh, I'm uh, I got my whole house for myself. I'm gonna really tie some flies for you. And as I told you, take uh, this under this small uh, under wool from the from the from the moose 
you take care of that because uh, I'm gonna show you a really really simple fly but uh, highly efficient uh, small small nymph in size I think I tried all the way down to size 20 small nymphs and small nymphs really were great so I'm gonna save this and uh, I have a little box where I put them in like that so we're gonna tie some small nymphs so thanks again see you in my next episode take care take care bye Thank you.